So if you have been scrolling through X recently, you might have stumbled upon this post where someone was deploying their application to a serverless environment. Their app went viral and now they have a $96,000 bill that they're responsible for. This is one horror story that we've seen with serverless, but there's others out there. Here's another one where someone accidentally created an infinite loop between two lambdas, racked up several hundred thousand dollars of bill in a couple of hours. And then I have my own personal story with my serverless environment getting DDoSed. I ended up getting a bill for about $1,500, even though I thought I had it set up correctly. So even though I do like serverless, I do think that there's a higher learning curve for getting everything deployed there and getting it set up properly. So that if something were to go wrong, so it's not your wallet basically getting affected, it's just your service. Now, the last thing I'll say is that on my own side projects, I am actually deploying these to a VPS as well. So projectplannerai.com is actually deployed to a VPS and it works pretty good. I mean, it's snappy, it's written in Next.js. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can deploy a Next.js application to a VPS because that's something that I highly recommend that you do if you don't want your wallet getting affected. So for the VPS, we are gonna be using Hostinger, which is also the sponsor of this video. And I'm gonna walk you through how you can create a VPS, how to get your Next.js application deployed there. And we are gonna be using a free tool under the hood called Coolify, which really helps manage and deploy your own applications to a VPS and not have to worry about like doing all the manual setup yourself. So let's just go ahead and dive into this. I'm going to walk you through all this stuff uh, in just a bit. So here is the Next.js application that I have running locally. It's a simple one page application. We have the ability to subscribe to a newsletter. So if I say like Cody at example.com, I click subscribe. That's going to go ahead and submit some data and I'm storing that in a Terso database. So if I go here and refresh this, you'll see that that subscription just popped up. So before we dive into creating a VPS, I do want to say that Hostinger is providing you with a 10% discount code. If you type in WebDevCody for your discount code and go to hostinger.com slash WebDevCody, you can apply that code to your checkout, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So over here around Hostinger, let's go to Hosting, and I'm going to go to VPS Hosting. And I'm going to go ahead and click Choose a Plan. And for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and just pick this KVM VPS 2, which gives you two virtual CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, 100 gigabytes of performant NVMe disk space, and also eight terabytes of bandwidth. So for the most part, if you have a small scale application or a medium sized application, a VPS is going to handle quite a lot of traffic. And Hostinger also gives you a bunch of other features as well. So go ahead and read through those. Let's go ahead and choose this plan. Now, Hostinger has multiple plans. If you want to get the best bang for your buck, you probably want to pick a longer type of plan if you're serious about you know, deploying an application. Let's just go ahead and pick the 12 months here. And you can create an account and type in your information. Over here, you can type in your information. So I'll say Cody, I'll leave all this stuff optional. And then you can type in your city, your street address. But down here, before you actually try to submit your payment, make sure you type in that web dev Cody discount code and apply that. And you'll see that additional 10% off get applied to our already pretty highly discounted plan. And then when you do, you have access to spin up your VPS. All right, so we are on the setup page. Let's just go ahead and set up our KVM2 VPS over here. And this will walk you through a setup wizard. Let's just say start now. You can pick from various regions over here. So in our case, um, I live on the East Coast, so I'm gonna click Boston, and then I'm gonna click Continue. So this step allows you to select your operating system. Um, in our case, we are just gonna pick Ubuntu, but I do wanna say that they have the ability to set up an operating system with a panel, if that's something that you want. I know cPanel is something I hear all the time. I personally haven't used it too much. And then also you can go to the applications and install various things when the VPS sets up. So I'm gonna go to plain OS and we're just gonna go ahead and pick the latest version Ubuntu. So now you're asked if you want to install this Monarchs malware scanner. I'm just gonna go ahead and say continue. And then we are gonna set a root password. So let's just go ahead and click on generate password. All right, and you can also set up an SSH key, which uh, might make getting into the machine a little bit easier if you don't wanna remember a password. It's probably more secure as well. Just go ahead and click continue and then i will say finish setup so now the machine is done provisioning what we could do now is just copy this ssh access they also have a nice vps dashboard you can check out which maybe we'll do in just a second where you can kind of see information about your server your ip your host name you can go here and you can change configuration about your machine you can see server usage but i'm not going to dive into all the details of that because i just want to show you how you could potentially get your Next.js application deployed out first i like the ssh using my vs code terminal directly but they do provide an option if you want to just use your browser terminal you can actually just ssh directly from there which is pretty cool so i actually am going to go in the settings and i want to create an ssh key over here because i do think it is a little bit more secure and i feel like i should probably just do that instead of the password so let's click add ssh key i'm going to say my key and then the way you can do this is on your machine itself, typically you can do SSH hyphen keygen, and that'll kind of walk you through and generate an SSH key for you. And after you've done that process, which I've already have, 
you can get your public key over here and you can paste that in to this SSH key box. So let me just go ahead and paste that in and add the SSH key over here. So now we should be able to run this SSH command and we'll go ahead and type in yes. And that should connect us into our VPS. So now we're in our VPS over here, as you can tell. All right, so now that we're in our VPS, we can go ahead and just start running a couple of commands. So what I'm gonna move on to now is setting up Coolify inside the VPS that we just spun up. So let's go and follow the documentation. So let's just go ahead and copy this command and just run it directly inside that SSH terminal we just set up. Okay, now that's gonna install Coolify. And the reason I'm using Coolify over just like, I don't know, cloning your repo and building on the machine itself and running it yourself Coolify has a nice you know, management dashboard where we can see logs. You can manually set up applications and services. You can restart them. It's just a more managed system, and I highly recommend that you use something like this versus trying to roll your own deployment system on the VPS yourself, unless you are skilled enough to figure that out yourself. Now, Coolify does heavily use Docker, and so right now it's just installing a bunch of Docker images, which we're going to be using for hosting our Next.js application. But it's pretty cool. It's just one command, you run it, and then after this is all done setting up, you should be able to see your Coolify UI login and we can start installing our processes. All right, so it says Coolify is ready to use. Let's just go ahead and go to this IP address. And now we have the Coolify dashboard. So we can just go ahead and make whatever login that we want. I'll just say web dev Cody. I'll say web dev Cody at gmail.com. Password could be whatever you want. Go ahead and click register, okay. And now it's gonna walk you through the Coolify dashboard, okay? So again, make sure your password's secure because anyone with your IP can go to the 8000 port and just start trying to do what they want with their stuff. Let's go ahead and just walk through the onboarding process and see what it tells us to do. So I wanna go ahead and set this up as a local host server, okay? And then we're gonna create a new project. And now we're on the Coolify dashboard. As you can tell, there's a lot of features here, but we're gonna hopefully just touch on a few of them. All we wanna do is we wanna connect Coolify to our repo that we have. So let's just go ahead and say connect it to a public repository here. And then I'm gonna select my server, which is localhost. And then I'm gonna select this standalone Docker. And then we're gonna paste the location to our repo, which is this. So let's just go ahead and grab this entire repo link, go back to our Coolify dashboard. I'll paste this in and I'll say check repository, which is hidden by my head. And now it's gonna detect that, hey, we could probably host your application using Nixpack on port 3000. And I'm gonna go ahead and say continue. So after doing that, what we could do is over here, there is a deploy button. And after you've set up whatever configuration that you think you might need, you can go ahead and deploy out your Next.js application. So let's just go ahead and click on deploy. And that is going to basically build an image using our Git repo. And Nixpack is what it's using under the hood. It figures out that we're using Next.js and Node. And so it's gonna go ahead and bundle that and run that how we'd expect it to run. Now there might be one or two things that we do have to set up um, and then we'll have to probably redeploy, which is the environment variable. So let's go back to the configuration while this is deploying and let's go to the left to environment variables and let's go ahead and add some. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this one and we wanna be able to connect the Terso directly from our box. So I'm gonna grab the Terso connection URL here. I'm gonna go ahead and say save and then we're also going to add the Terso auth token. Do this, grab this auth token and I will click save and I'll close that. Now, technically what we could do, cause I know this is not going to work. I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just deploy this one more time with the environment variables that we had set up. Now, unfortunately this did fail. And this is something good that we need to recognize when your build is running, it can sometimes fail, especially with Next.js. But what I like to do sometimes is I'll just build locally and make sure that like, if there's any TypeScript errors, we want to make sure Next.js doesn't just randomly fail on you. And I do believe we have one TypeScript error on this newsletter page that we're gonna have to fix. And it's complaining about an apostrophe that we're using right here. So I'm gonna say at apost this, and then we can actually commit this up. I'll just go ahead and say um, fixing TypeScript error, commit that up so that next time we run in Coolify, it won't fail. And we can also just rebuild locally just to make sure that everything should be fine. Okay, it's generating our application. It's decided that everything is good. Let's go back to Coolify and let's try deploying one more time. Now in Coolify, you can actually set up GitHub hooks so that when you push changes, it'll go ahead and kick off another deployment, which will make your life a lot easier. 
Um, unless you like the manual process of coming in here and clicking a deploy button when you've changed stuff. So after this is done deploying, you actually go to your general tab over here and they have a domains here that you can actually select. And if I go and paste this in, you'll see that we have our application actually running now. Go ahead and just scroll through here. And notice that this is not a production ready deployment. We still have like it's HTTP and not HTTPS. But let's just test it out and see if it works. So over here, I'm gonna type in some like random at gmail.com, click subscribe. And let's go to our Terso database and make sure that we can see that data now. And there you have it. That data was added from our currently deployed application on the VPS. And now we can actually have people use our application. We can collect their email subscriptions that are going to be stored directly into our Terso database. Okay, so the next steps are we actually want a real domain. Remember that the domain we have is just like some arbit arbitrary generated domain that obviously you can't give to real users. So let's point a real domain to this. I'm going to go over to Cloudflare, which is where I currently have my DNS records set up. I'm going to go to webdevcody.com and we're going to go to DNS. And again, you can use whatever DNS setup that you want. Like I also use Namecheap a lot for my DNS records. Let's go to records over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in a new record. We want to add in an A record because we're going to point directly to the machine. If you're pointing with an IP address, typically use an A record. And the name, we're going to say my example app. And we're going to paste in the IP address of the machine. So let's just go ahead and click on this. Go back over here, click this. And a good reason for deploying your application through Cloudflare um, is that it's going to automatically do DDoS detection for you. And you can set up some simple rate limiting rules using their WAF if you want. I highly recommend going through Cloudflare and then also make sure you don't leak your IP address. You can also set up Cloudflare tunnels, which can really help even more secure your application. But I'm going to go ahead and just save this like this. And now my DNS record should be pointing to my Coolify deployment that's on my hosting or VPS, right? So how do I get this set up? Well, I can just go ahead and say add in HTTPS. And I want to add in myexampleapp.com, webdevcody.com. Okay, and so once I've updated this, I should be able to go down here. And if you scroll through here, we can go ahead and just regenerate this. So I'm going to go ahead and say reset to Coolify generated labels. Click continue. And now you should see that it added in myexampleapp.com at webdevcody.com. And then I'm going to click redeploy. Now I will say if you want more information about like what's going on, you can click on show debug logs and that'll show you the actual like Docker build commands that are happening under the hood. Um, so right now it's just building. That's why it's kind of taken a while. It has to basically refetch our data from GitHub. It has to rebuild using Docker and then it has to basically make the image tag it and then it probably redeploys it. So now let's go ahead and test this out. So if we go back to my domains, I should be able to copy this domain and we're going to go ahead and just paste that in and go to it. And look at that. We have our application fully running. I have it under my subdomain. This is under HTTPS because under the hood, Coolify is using Let's Encrypt to create your SSL certs. And we could basically do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and say like ZZZ at example.com. Go ahead and subscribe. And again, that created the record in our database over here. So let's just go ahead and refresh this real quick. And we see it over here. So super easy to basically set up a VPS using Hostinger. They have some really good deals for pricing. So the kind of highlight why I recommend using Cloudflare is that if you were to get DDoS like I did in the video that I mentioned over here, Cloudflare has an under attack mode. And so I can just go ahead and turn this on. And now if I were to try to go back to my application, notice that it validates that I'm an actual human and then I'm redirected to this app. So if you are getting DDoS or getting a lot of traffic, you can go in here and just turn on attack mode. Yeah, I won't dive too much into Cloudflare, but that's basically how I would host my own applications on a VPS. And I highly recommend if you're a beginner, that's how you should probably do it as well. So again, all right, that's all I want to share with you in this video. Remember, go to hostinger.com and use that link in code that should be in the description below if you want to get a really good deal on a long-term plan for a VPS and follow the steps that I did in this guide. Have a good day and happy coding.